Welcome to Lecture 12, Public Administration in South Africa. Introduction South Africa has been severally marked by its past. Having only just come out of apartheid rule in 1994, the structure of racial domination are still well entrenched white minority rule and dominating in South Africa resulted in the craving of only a marginal space for the majority black population in a country that is indigenous to them. The logic of apartheid rule predisposed its public institutions as vehicles for the implementation of the agenda of discrimination. Years after apartheid rule, the transfer of power to popularly elected leader has led to attempt to rebuild a country based on the reconciliation of differences that were becoming forced under the apartheid regime. Since the beginning of the new dispensation, the South Africa Public Service has been opened up in differences to the principles of equity. Recent reports released by the Commission for Employment Equity demonstrate the tremendous progress that has been made to open up the civil service to the black majority population as well as to women. See Commission for Employment Equity Report. With this progress notwithstanding, there still remain significant loopholes in the current configuration of the South Africa society partly because it has been difficult to transform the impact of long years of apartheid rule overnight, particularly with the respect to its effect on social stratification in a society, where the predominant sources of influence are wielded by the white minority. Course Objectives At the end of this lecture, you should be able to 1. Discuss the ecology of public administration in South Africa. 2. Discuss the impact of apartheid on the civil service. 3. Discuss starving, promotion, remuneration in the South Africa civil service. Country profile. South Africa is at the southern tip of the African continent and is home to about 50 million inhabitants. More than 70% of them are Africans, speaking one of the 10 Bantu languages. There are approximately 1 million South Africans of India descent. 4.6 million of mixed race called colors in South Africa balance and some 5.2 million of European origin. South Africa has the largest economy and the most flourishing economy in Africa, a situation that puts it in the category of middle income categories. It has an open economy dominated by international trade. The country is characterized by several levels of economic and social inequality, one of the greatest in the developing world. Consequently, average national economic and social indicators consist significant variation among racial, class, and gender groups. Picard 2002. For example, the segregated system of education under apartheid resulted in mass illiteracy and about 15 million people were illiterate in 1998. The contrast between wealth and poverty 
is stricken in South Africa, where most South African households experience poverty or vulnerability to being poor. May 1998. The hosting of the 2010 World Cup has added more feathers to its cap. Why the huge resources expanded on hosting the tournament and the gigantic infrastructures put in place to host the soccer teams and France from across the world may have masked the reality in the country. The signposts of poverty are still visible, not least in settlements inhabited by its black population. Income distribution is among the most unequal in the world, and many households still have unsatisfactory access to clean water, energy, health care, and education. Governance Environment of Public Administration The coming to power of National Party in 1948 transformed the landscape of Saravika politics not for good but for ill. Upon its ascendance to power, it passed the Group Areas Act of 1950, the Separate Amenities Act, the Bantu Education Act of 1953, among others. Apartheid kept all the minorities who paradoxically included the majority blacks, not only separate but also deprived. It was only in 1992 that President the Klink White's only referendum confirmed the need for reforms with 68.7% voting in favor. Tumala, 1999. In 1994, new elections were held in African National Congress under the leadership of Nelson Mandela came to power. The new constitution starts with a phrase that attests to the collective will of South Africa to recognize the injustice of our past with the belief that the country belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity. It also expected that the new constitution will heal the division of the past and establish a society based on democratic values, social justice, and fundamental human rights. The constitution makes provision for equality. The constitution provides that the state may not unfairly discriminate directly or indirectly against anyone on one or more grounds, including race, gender, sex, pregnancy, marital status, ethnic or social origin, color, sexual orientation, age, disability, religion, conscience, belief, culture, language, and birth. It's cited in Tumwala, 1999. Overview of government. The constitution of the Republic of South Africa was approved by the Constitutional Court on 4th December, 1996 and took effect on 4th February 1997. The constitution is the supreme law of the land. South Africa runs a bicameral parliament made up of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. The parliament is the legislative authority of South Africa and it has power to make laws for the country in accordance with the constitution. 
The president is the head of state and leads the cabinet. She or he is elected by the National Assembly from among its members and leads the country in the interest of national unity and in accordance with the constitution and the law. The deputy president must assist the president in executing government functions. According to United Nations 2004, the Constitutional Council is the highest court for interpreting and deciding constitutional issues, while the Supreme Court of Appeal is the highest court for non-constitutional matters. Civil Service The overall objective of South African Public Service is to develop a public service that is representative, coherent, transparent, efficient, effective, accountable, and responsible to the needs of all. This statement was contained in a white paper released in November 1995 and was the principal direct di driver of the transformation process. The goals set out in the paper were further stipulated in the 1996 Constitution. The Public Service Act of 1994 provides the legal foundation of the South African Civil Service. Because of its unpleasant past, the emphasis of the South African Civil Service with regard to staffing has been to promote equity as much as possible. The primacy of this objective was underlined with the promulgation of the Empower Employment Equity Act in 1998. Its overall objective is to promote equality in the workplace and equitable representation of disadvantaged groups in all occupational categories and levels in the workforce by prohibiting discrimination and providing for affirmative action measures and employment equity planning. The need to emphasize such measures must have been weighed against the prevailing evidence at the time and it was not out of place that such preferential measures were introduced. As at 1994, over 96% of all top positions in the public service were filled by whites who constitute only 13% of the total population. What must be kept in sight, however, is the need to make sure that in trying to address an imbalance, another imbalance is not created. Interestingly, in the case of South Africa, affirmative action has been turned on its head as a result of the peculiar manifestation of discrimination in South Africa. Whereas, the recurrent theme on issues on discrimination is discrimination against minorities. In the case of South Africa, it was the majority that was at the receiving end of discriminatory policies. The shift from a civil service system based on ascription and subjective values to one based on achievement and merit has been an important ingredient in this transformative process. Through the recruitment process, equitable representation can be achieved. At the provincial level, provincial administration are charged with the responsibility of setting targets for achieving specific employment equity objective when drawing their recruitment policies and procedures, according to United Nations 2004. These policies have had a remarkable impact. In December 2001, 85% of public servants were blacks, and the management colon included 
66% black people. This is a significant improvement on the situation in 1999 when only 41% of managers were blacks. Although, with respect to people living with disabilities, a modest target of 2% by 2005 is still far from being achieved with currently only 0.02% of public service employees recorded as having a disability, according to United Nations 2004. The basis for promotion, as introduced by Public Service Amendment Act 1997 and the Public Service Regulation, resonates with the new performance management system typical of new management new public management reforms the new system establishes a clear link between the objectives of the institution and individual work objectives the new system establishes a clear link between the objectives of the institution and individual work objectives the new performance management system bases promotion and career advancement on performance rather than on seniority or qualifications. Other issues that have received attention are remuneration, right sizing, and gender. Provincial government. In accordance with the constitution, each of the nine provinces has its own legislature consisting of between 30 and 80 members. The number of members is determined in terms of formula set out in national legislation. The members are elected in terms of proportional representation. The executive council of a province consists of a premier and a number of members. The premier is elected by the provincial legislature and decisions are taken by consensus as in national cabinet. Besides being able to make provincial law, a provincial legislature may adopt a constitution for its province if its members agree. However, a provincial constitution must correspond with the national constitution as confirmed by the constitutional court. The constitution has element of federalism and the nine provinces may pass laws on certain matters such as education, health and housing. However, the national legislature retains its legislative power in these areas and may override provincial legislation in the event of a conflict. Exclusive provincial legislative competence is reversed, is reserved for less important matters. Summary South African has been shaped by long years of apartheid rule, but since 1994, effort has been made to rewrite the history of the country and to foster reconciliation among the various people that occupy South Africa. The public administrative institutions were during apartheid an emblem of the regime's exclusionist and discriminatory policies and to a great degree it fostered the designs of the leaders of the apartheid system. In the post-apartheid era, addressing the disease of apartheid has had to be undertaken intensively within the country's administrative systems through various measures to open up the civil service to black people or abrogates and colored people. This is the end of lecture 12. Thank you for listening.